All right. Uh, <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome to episode three of Sarcast. I'm your host, Wheezy Jacket, alongside Broads McGoats and Popcorn the Beaver. And we're going to be talking about weapon balancing and, uh, and balance. <laughs> we're going to be talking about all the balance things today. We won't stop at guns that we feel like are underpowered, overpowered, or in the middle. But we'll talk about power ups as well as emus. Just kind of go completely through it. Um, I think we all agreed. The whole spectrum. Yeah, the whole spectrum of balance. Uh, I think we said that we were going to start off with weapons. So just at the top yes. of the wiki weapons list, we have the handguns. Anything stick out here for underpowered or overpowered specifically? The first thing that jumps out is silence. As over? Like I just, yeah, it's always been overpowered for me. Yeah. It's like, I, I think it's mainly just that it's overpowered in the field that it's just, it's a generalist, but it's so good at doing everything generally that it's just, it, it's it's hard to find fault with the silence pistol outside of like ammo. Well, actually, let's start with this then. Do we agree that purple guns that are only purple and gold should feel way stronger than any ground loot? Does anyone disagree with that? Personally, I partially disagree because, like, you take a look at something like sniper versus hunting rifle, and you can make statements about things like, oh, yeah, hunting rifle is a side grade to sniper because you can technically use it more aggressively due to the reload canceling. But then you also have something like gold BCG versus uh, purple BCG, and there is a massive difference between those two especially pre-nerf, so it's kind of different with each gun. But for the most part, I'd like to say that you should be able to have better situational chances with purple and yellow guns, but only by a very slight margin. Yeah. So is like that being ups, met right now? Power should no? be everything. I think that's being met, if I'm being honest, because, like, I don't really see many people complaining about things like... Uh, Deagle, Sniper. People complain about Jag, but they also complain about Shotgun, because, you know, haha, Shotgun. But mm -hmm. for the most part, I don't actually see people complaining about, like, rarity issues. So I feel like overall, when you compare, like, um, a blue to a purple, it's pretty well put in terms of just, like, damage difference and overall balance. There's obviously some outliers, but... I think it's pretty consistent, and I'd like it to remain that way, if I'm being honest. So I think I want to bring up real quickly, Silence Pistol. I feel like I have heard people discuss that gun. Super fast time to kill, you know. So oh, absolutely. always been a solid choice. I'm just bouncing between the pistol and dual pistols right now. What is actually the difference again? Because I am. So, so it's the exact yeah. same range, exact exact same damage, exact. exact it's just same. additional bullets and additional reload time. That's it. Yeah, there's oh, also okay. a slightly wider bullet gap spread on the dualies, but it's so slim that it's barely even noticeable. Oh, there it is. I see it. Yeah, dual, um, dual yep. pistol, reload speed 0. 0.3 longer for its extra bullets, and then the recoil spread. It says it's very late. It says the Did recoil spread is exactly the same, actually. Odd. 0 0.51, 1.6, 1.9, 0, 0 0.51, 1.6, 1.9, yeah. So it really is yeah. just, what, 10 extra bullets for an extra reload time, eh? Pretty much. Huh. I yeah. would like I would like there to be some actual, like, distinct, like, actually felt distinguishable um, gameplay differences between those two guns. I'm not going to lie. That would be... I That'd be interesting, but that's probably something else to talk yeah, about. That's not, that's not exactly yeah. balance. That's more about. I feel like with dually, so it maybe since you're shooting two pistols at the same time, I feel like it sh there should be a little more recoil. Hmm. Honestly, yeah, because like you're basically you're using Kimbo pistols, whereas yeah. with one, it's kind of like you got both hands on one versus yeah. you only got one hand on one. Yep, with like both. So I feel yeah, no, I do feel like it would be an interesting way to go about. Uh, changing dualies. Yeah. But mm -hmm. a, a topic that I've always actually wanted to talk about, like with people, is the concept of dualies versus silence. Because 
I do remember that this was a g genuine debate back when they first made it so that you can even get dualies, where people are like, well, the sustain is an actual really good thing versus the high, like, burst rate utility. And then a lot of people just defaulted to, yeah, no, silence better. But nowadays, it's kind of been brought back up, I think, is a little small debate. And I've always kind of looked at it like, if I'm in a situation where I basically just can never reload, I'd rather have some dualies. But if I'm in a situation where, like, I'm basically playing full assassin, I have a lot of time to prep, or just basically I have a large amount of advantage in the situation, then yeah, I'd want to silence. So I feel like there is a dissociation between both of them. Hmm. That's just me, though. Other than that, I have heard about tuning down silence pistol, uh, single pistol. It's not really a discussion for balance directly, just sure. a, a feeling of wanting a little bit of a difference between those two weapons. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have to keep in mind, though, the silence pistol has like 12 shots in the clip. So you got to like make every shot count. <laughs> that is true. All right. Well, uh, under our handguns, we have shotguns. Now, there is constantly complaints about shotguns, uh, honestly. Especially yep. when it it's, comes to it's been like that of since latency. 2019. <laughs> because sometimes on your screen, they're hitting a quarter of one pellet from a distance unhuman. And then you're taking 125 damage and it's night night. So I know, let's try to stay away from latency though, because that's its own issue. Oh, yeah, and no, just absolutely. Directly with the weapon, nerf buff, what do we think? I th if I'm being honest, uh, this might be a little controversial take, but I genuinely think shotguns are pretty balanced. Yeah. I, th I, I think it's balanced as well, because, like, I feel like the range nerf was certainly enough to uh, yeah. make it completely balanced. Because yeah. shotguns were very oppressive uh, back then. Uh, you could combo it with, like, anything really, like, like a sniper, for example, people like ran pistols, sniper shotguns, magnum, so much sniper, in 2019. AK, like literally anything that has medium to long range and good burst. Yeah, no, just pair that with a shotgun. Yeah, shotgun used to like, um, it used to outmatch the SMG quite a lot back in the day. Oh, god, yeah, now it's a lot more like well, then I feel like a lot more people know how to play around it, but yep. I, I think the best way I could describe the shotgun is that. It's the best at doing one very specific thing. Yeah, and so, when it's not doing that one very specific thing, it sucks. That's, that's actually exactly where I was about to go is sometimes you can play a shotgun and not have a single person come within a, a central range of a shotgun, you know? So I feel like it is kind of a sacrifice. And if you're willing to take it and willing to get in people's faces, then it, I feel like it probably should stand how, uh, with how strong it is right now. Um, I don't think yeah. it's too overpowered. I don't yep. think it's too underpowered. But um, once again, I feel like that that conversation of shotguns is always going to be around latency and just getting annihilated by bullets that are nowhere near. Oh, you absolutely. On your I have mm -hmm. so many clips of me just dying to things that are like two meters away, being able to shoot through walls. It's insane. <laughs> and oh uh, under that, SMGs. I think we skipped Magnums, no? Um, handgun, yeah, can, Magnum uh, and Deagle are all under handguns, which is at the top of the available guns list on the wiki. Yeah, right. I, I just, I don't, I think we only talk about pistols and we went to shotguns. Gotcha, do you want to, I was just go under handguns, period. Do you want to have, do you yeah. have a note about Deagle or Magnum? I, I, like, if I can just say something quickly, it's always been my personal, like, thought that the Magnum, at, at least at, like, blue, is probably one of the most well-balanced guns in the entire game. Like, yep. it's got a nice skill curve to it. It's not insanely oppressive. And if I'm being honest, I don't think I've ever felt angry about, like, dying to a Magnum. Because it takes a lot. Like, it doesn't take, like, a lot, a lot of skill to use it. But if I'm being honest, like, it's got good entry. It's got a good skill ceiling. And it's got good utility. You can pair it with basically literally anything. And it's just, it's a good armor breaker. It's a good damage dealer. It's got good range. I, I don't think I could ever get mad at it unless they just genuinely fully change it somehow. But yeah, no, it's like flat balance. I don't really get mad about dying to a Magnum if it was a bot. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, no, because like Magnum bots are horrifying and I will not hear anything else. And like, funny you enough... Give a, you uh... give an AI perfect accuracy, that's scary. 
funny enough, the Magnum back then it was it was not as powerful as you think. Like it was it was very underpowered in terms of like armor tick because it it used to only do one tick of armor per shot. That's true. It was it was horrible, horrible. Oh my you could God, not kill someone. To... You could not kill someone if they had a tier three. Yeah. Like, when was that? Was that um the super major update when they first released an initial it, So it was before point ninety six point three. So point ninety six point three they made it so oh now it breaks two two ticks of armor instead of one. Yeah, November seventeenth, twenty twenty. That's when it was. It was the super major update. Yep. Yeah, the main, damn, SVR was really that long ago. But yeah, sorry. The main nerf I want here is the um, Magnum skins. Why does the Magnum have so many skins? Does it have the? Most you know why? Yeah. <laughs> does it actually Dude, the Magnum get say. some fire skins, man? Actually, hold on. M I think AK actually has more. My bad. I didn't know. It's fair. Like a lot of guns have. Um... I mean, they're very common though when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the first thing you're gonna see as a player. If yeah, you want to talk about a lot of skins, let's talk about the BCG. That thing gets a skin every single update. All right, like, <laughs> oh my god! Oh, uh, it actually has one less than the AK and M16. Ah, oh, so. damn. I guess it's because it's still technically new. Okay. I always think it has more skins than it does, but yeah. Uh, sorry. sorry, sorry for the extra. I tried to, I tried to do the funny, and I took us off. <laughs> off the edge for a second. Um, it always we happened. Did. We did start with the SMG conversation, and obviously, I think there's one that we should. Oh, we kind of skipped Eagle. <laughs> what? Okay, okay, hold on. I'm well, going okay, crazy. I'm looking at the wiki. The I'm looking at the wiki right now, right? And I'm under guns, right? When it says list of available guns, under that it says handguns. So when I said, let's talk about handguns, I'm meaning the pistol, two pistols, Magnum, Eagle, and pistol. Silence Pistol. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. We kind of like just completely dodge. Yeah, I didn't know if every, I didn't know if we would have notes on every single gun or if people would just speak up under the tree if they wanted to say something about one of the guns. You know, so that's fair. It's actually quick. We should actually make that also, known fun right fact, now. Do we want to um, talk about every weapon or do we want to just whichever ones we have note for under? Uh, one of the just. Trees? Uh, if just it stands which, out, then we'll really. talk about it. But yeah. if it's like too much in one category that they're all muddled up, then yeah, we could just say, "Oh yeah, it's blank." Okay. Also, before uh, I want to say one thing about like the Magnum or slash the Eagle, it used to take little bullets instead of big bullets. When was so, that? Uh, point eight, point eight, point eight, point eighty nine point one. Ah oh, damn! They made the change of transitioning from little bullets to big. So like. On a Deagle or Magnum, you you could carry up to like 110, I think, if you had a little bullets. Uh, okay. Wow. But now, it's, but now it's like, what, 80? 80, 80 you can carry? Yeah, because then they reduced yeah. it not that long ago. But yeah, anyway, uh, submachine guns, there's a lot to talk about here, because I feel like there's two very distinct types of weapons in that category. Mm hmm. So, which one do you want to talk about? Yeah, I, I think uh, just get a SMG out of the way. I'd say, we'll... yeah, let's get SMG out of the way. Yeah, so SMG and Thomas Gun, personally, I've always felt that SMG was a bit underpowered. And really? I, I genuinely do. And I think mainly it stems to the fact that, like, when you compare it to something like Dooley's, for example, you're basically trading so many nice features in exchange for five more ammo. Yeah. Like that, that that's about right. my view of it. I do genuinely think it's like really, it's really useful as a nice burst tool, but I would still, in either case, just rather have a pair of pistols. But I always oh. thought it was the most balanced weapon in the game because it's not Fair. too, it's not too oppressive and it's not too underpowered either. It's just right in the middle. I definitely know that a lot of uh, new Let's players see. love the SMG. It is just... So hold on. It's, it's easy, easy to find. This is where things get interesting, because we just heard Popcorn say it's a bit underwhelming. We heard Weezy say it's balanced, and I think it's overpowered. I. So we're all kind of split here. This is actually perfect. This is what, where good conversation comes from. But I am a big fan of holding down right trigger guns, not doing 33, 32, 31 damage a hit with the, the bait. Like... The SMG can do up to 35 damage per bullet uh, with that many bullets holding down mouse one. And the M16, which only comes in purple and gold, does 37. Why Why, are the, why is there such a, like a close... I don't know. I feel like I would like to see SMG bump down one or two damage per bullet in all I mean, categories. you have to keep in mind, though, like 
at a certain range, like there is damage drop off. So like, yeah, that is what, true. At at a hundred uh, SAU, which is super animal units, it does like fourteen at max. So it's it's halved. Yeah, it, it's, I just think it's that not, any not too, gun that you can much, hold though. down the right trigger. So I'm gonna make the same uh, plea for all of the other hold down right trigger guns. I just feel like that is what makes it oppressive in quotation marks is when you get to hold down the trigger infinitely. You know, like and just continue to pump out damage. Like, I don't know. I would call those unskilled weapons, the ones where you hold down the button permanently. And I would like to see the other guns where you have to have a trigger finger or really nice accuracy because of the time in between shots and the inaccuracy. Like, I would rather see those guns flourish in any situation than guns like the SMG, the Thomas gun, the AK, the M16, you know? Yeah, they're easy to pick up, which I do think adds on to that. That, like, yeah. anybody can really use it, and the ceiling for, I guess, skill application isn't very high with a gun like that. Like, yes, there is technically a fixed bullet spread for both that and the AK, and they're upgraded, well, I guess, quote-unquote, upgraded variants, but it's so hard to, like, memorize, and when you shoot it, the cone for the SMG especially, I cannot speak, especially, is massive it's just like it always feels huge whenever you're just like walking with it and it just i don't know i i've never really i think that's where i like say personally that i've always felt it was underwhelming is that i just don't like it when my bullets decide hey you know what i'm gonna go like the exact opposite of where you want to go (laughs) yeah no pretty much (laughs) it's so weird that i'm just i don't know i've always appreciated like pistols and i guess that's where my bias is and what's the balance conversation for you easy what in your head makes it like down the middle um so like with an smg like i mean de- depending on how uh the range of the player like of course you're going to be spraying up uh, up close but so there's moments where i just like to like t- do a little few round burst with it if i want to face someone from long range to mid range but uh, the gun itself, it's it's really, it it's perfectly fine, uh, as it is. Like, of course, there's damage drop off, so it it's not gonna be too too oppressive. But, uh, but yeah, I think I think it's really balanced as a whole. Like, it's not too too strong. It's not it's not too weak either. It's it's just right in the middle. Like, it's it's a weapon that doesn't necessarily need any changes, in my honest opinion. Because like later down the road you're gonna pick up a better weapon anyways. Like maybe maybe some people won't use an SMG the entire game, but um, but up to other people maybe they will. So who knows? If, if we were to like to quickly segue into the realm with the Thomas gun, it, it kind of like stems as a big difference because I think the largest noticeable thing is the fact that you have 35 ammo and pre nerf it had 40. So. And then before that, it was 50. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's like, in what world was that acceptable? Holy. That's insane. It was, Back in it was, 0.92. Yeah, it's when uh, the Penguin Palace dropped. That's true. Correctly. That was the uh, that was the first ever Lunar event, I think. Holy no, it was a CRISPR miss event. <laughs> no, because it happened in like, January, and they introduced like the uh, Lunar Rat in that update. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. No, but, like, point no, is, no, that, no, that's... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but, I can say without a fact, like, the Thomas gun came out during Christmas. Gotcha. So oh, no, it did. I'm use... just, I'm saying the uh, 50 spread to 40 was on. No, it, no. No, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. Um, SMGs, interesting conversation, but I want to have this conversation way more. Super right laser. Ooh, do well, I have some choice words to I, say about this? I have a feeling. Fella. Do we all agree that it's like underpowered? I mean, we talked about this in like uh, one of our previous episodes. Yeah. Do we do we all agree it's underpowered? Uh, uh, you uh, go first. Honestly, I th- I think it is underpowered because okay. like it's just the recoil. Yeah. yeah hold on. Like, hold, pause there, Weezy. Popcorn. What do you think? So I my statement. <laughs> that that was a full regard- statement. Just say if it's underpowered or overpowered. Yeah, it's underpowered. <laughs> okay, I think so too. So I would like this to focus more instead of us just all sucking each other off in the underpowered realm. Yeah, I would like you know, to actually I, yeah. talk about some implementations that we could actually 
think that would be interesting to to get it to that balanced state then like i feel like that I, could be a cooler way to, to, to this this conversation can go nice stutters yes i love stuttering yes sorry god <laughs> it's it comes with the it comes with the process you know mm. uh i i think actually i had a discussion with someone who was like really like he spent a lot of years in game balance and like he just came over to star and he was confused about like why people liked the laser and this is a new player which is like prime target for thinking oh yeah the laser's overpowered and then when I described to him, oh yeah, a lot of people who come to play this game just like to hold one button and hopefully get kills. And he's like, ah, yes, I understand now. But the way I could put it right is that the laser is an issue on both sides of the coin. Like you have um, a lot of the new players who are very afraid of it or like to call it overpowered. And then you have a lot more of the established like long-term players who look at it and they're like, what the hell is this pile of trash? So if you buff it, it becomes an issue for the new players. If you nerf it, you're going to have a bunch of people who have been here for like over 300 or so hours just coming in to go, why would you nerf this pile of trash? <laughs> so they yeah, quite literally it. have to just completely rework it, I think, because the state that it's in now is really unhealthy as it genuinely just punishes people for like being like okay the way i could put this was a statement i forgot who it was i remember it was one of the devs but they basically said it's the only gun in the game that punishes you for playing smart and i've never resonated with something for such a long time because literally the longer you hold down mouse one, the better it's going to be for you. The second you stop firing, congratulations, you're at a massive disadvantage. Like It just rewards yeah. you for not playing smart. It's, That's my issue. It's, it insinuates the same with the minigun, honestly. Yeah. With the it, minigun, I feel like it's warranted because, you know, it's a it's a minigun. But... Yeah, there's, a, there's quite a wind-up time. Yeah. That's the same also, with the um, laser. There's a charge-up time. They also uh, buffed the rev time to it from, what was it, like 0 0.72 to 0 0.48, I think it was? So, like, I don't remember what, when that was. But, what things uh, we want to see change to make it a little bit better, but also not overwhelming? Because here's what I'll say. I've run into, a, I've been playing squads, and running into two or three of these in one squad, and they're holding down last one, that can be a headache. But, like... It's annoying. It's annoying. I'd probably lower the fire rate. Lower the just fire rate and do what? Up damage or just literally lower? Like fire rate? lower the fire rate, but like also increase um, accuracy. Increase the accuracy. Okay. Yeah. I remember that, as that's what I would suggest. Uh, um, for some... a three round burst concept, which I've always found interesting Ooh. for a gun like that. Like it's kind of like um. Wait, that could actually be cool. Like yeah, but it's like um, it's just concentrated lasers that go like. Yeah, I could see beep, it being like the nemesis in Apex. Kinda. Yeah. It's like, uh, just as I a, mean, in terms of the shot, model, shot, looks, shot, it does look shot, like shot, it. Shot, shot. That could be interesting. I, when I think about it, I would say, um, I think it maybe lower the capacity by ten from fifty to forty, but then make the move speed while shooting instead of sixty four percent like seventy five, make it like ten percent faster. So you're just less incentivized to literally per I, this is once again going with my bias against weapons that you just permanently hold, hold down one button and turn off your brain but like so you're incentivized to move around a bit more or have to let out maybe 15 shots 20 shots then re reposition then go again you know but for now it's just like because you're so slow while you're moving it because you have so many shots you literally just permanently sit in one spot until someone completely runs off your screen yeah you just wait it out. Yeah, like, uh, so I don't know. Yeah. That just doesn't feel, like, rewarding. That doesn't feel like good gameplay on either side, does it? Like, I don't know if, about you, but that does not feel like satisfying gameplay on either side. Um, I, I do remember someone made a really cool concept for the gun and feedback that I did not know how to feel about, and still to this day don't, but what it was is that since it's really the only energy-powered weapon, they said, what if the thing kind of, like, leaked like little fuel onto you as you were using it and such and it just gave you benefits oh wait i saw that 
Yeah, it was just. I saw that. That was interesting. It's like a little booster thing where, like, some people said it could generate a little vial that you can use to buff yourself in some capacity, or it could just give it to you while you're firing. And I've always thought that it would be interesting, but it might have to be for, like, a game mode type thing, as that it, might be a bit too advanced for. I feel like it, it'd be similar to, like, the Nemesis and Apex, to be honest. How that has a um, ramping effect once you keep yeah. shooting for a certain amount of time. No, I, yep. I, I kind of really like that idea. Maybe not for this weapon specifically, but I really like that concept that they dropped there of like either having that weapon equipped for a certain amount of time gives you a little something like very small health over time because something is leaking or whatever, like you said, or very minute speed buff or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like uh, other yeah. cool little incentives to make specialty weapons feel special. And so, I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a super right laser. It doesn't feel like something that needs to happen with that gun to save it. There, I feel like there's solid kinda... options that are, like, normal, I, I guess I would use. But um, it could to be To put cool it simply, it go. just needs a rework. Yeah. It just needs to be changed. And we'll talk about a few things that just straight up need to be changed in a little bit. Um, yeah. Specifically, it's maybe a few in the power ups and throwables, but <laughs> um, we'll talk about that when it gets there. Um, uh, any other big notes for Super Right Laser before I will stop at the Thomas gun briefly, and then uh, we'll start heading up to some of these quote unquote side grade smile. As a, I, I guess, as a little quick note, I'd like to state what uh, a viewer of mine came into my stream for like the first time. I, I literally just used the laser for like, I think it was like one kill and I dropped it. He came in and said, you use the laser. You're stinkly, you're ugly, and frankly, you're just stupid. And then he just left. I never saw that man again. <laughs> so yeah, there's a little community sentiment for you there. That is crazy. And yep. Not only is that crazy, but true and respect to that guy. I love you. Come to my <laughs> stream. You'll fit right in. Let's go, <laughs> TTV bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Make sure to subscribe um, to my gnomely fan. Uh, all right. Rifles. <laughs> Super head laser. Yes. Did anyone or want to say we anything about the about Thomas gun? Thomas. I don't I really have we, much we to say. Got, um, like, yeah, we kind of got everything we wanted to say, didn't we? Yeah, we notes. did. It's it just big ammo funny. Just big ammo difference and then just like the slight recoil changes over time. Yeah. You know what? I'm kind of, after, I've never deep dived into stats this much. I kind of hate that nothing is rounded in these numbers. Like shot interval, 0.14. I have Rate of fire, so 429. To make rounding clarity, man. Like, holy mo Move speed, 109%. Can we just give it the one more? Like, I'll, I'll take it. Just no. do it. Jeez. All right. Sorry. I'm getting distracted. Numbers guy. Um, yeah, like long range sure. rifles, hunting <laughs> rifle, and sniper. Are either of these two things overpowered, underpowered, or are they balanced? In a oh. good player, they might be overpowered, but I feel like as general use, they're quite balanced because they do require so much skill in terms of precision. Yeah, you also got to be very, very patient with it to use. That's true. It's, it's, a, it's a sniper overall. And then hunting rifle, um, well, it's a lever action rifle, so you can just like tap reload, yeah. tap reload. There's also the whole reload canceling feature where like you hit the reload key like as it like finishes reloading, I think it was, and then you like just fire it immediately, which yeah. basically just allows it to be a a slower but more aggressive magnum in that regard. So it, like, there's a bit of a dissociation between like either of these two things because they, they feel like two entirely different guns, even if they are technically doing the same thing. Because they both yeah. do one thing very similarly. They both just completely remove armor entirely. Yeah, and also back in the day, uh, as an old player, um, you used to be able to one-shot hamster balls with Sniper. Yeah, they nerfed yeah. that. They they nerfed it, which yeah I get it. it was a it was a little too strong. So because you just kill hamster balls for one range. thing I was gonna talk about is um, sometimes I feel like the creep distance is like a little bit extreme. Um, yeah. Because sometimes there feels like there is legitimately zero um, counterplay if someone is already creeping off screen that you don't have inner information on. For example, if you know that someone's there 
and you don't play around it, I don't care. But I'm talking about when they have never been in your vision cone, you've heard no sounds from them, and you're getting your entire tier three armor pinged off screen. That feels very like uncounterable, but I was going through the patch history while I was listening to you guys, and that's something that's actually been buffed. That is true. Yep. Bullet range extended from 120 to 138 while sneaking. So obviously they do not agree because they, they're trying to get the bullet distance to match that extended creep range. So obviously, but what do you guys yeah, think about trying, what I just said? Do you? They're, I feel like they're just trying to insinuate people to crouch with it a little more with a sniper because yeah. most people use sniper, well, mostly veteran players, uh, they like to use it aggressively. <laughs> That is true. Like you as just like, peek, like a shoot, jump back, and then yep. It's it's a like okay. It, it's like a if passive and aggressive were somehow the same thing at the same time, it would be that. That's a yeah. very weird way of putting it, but it's just like you are being. I feel like being passive aggressive. <laughs> I feel like any adjustment now would make it either too strong or too weak. It's like it's right in between. And it's a very unfortunate in between, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Because like it'd be, it'd be tough to balance it. Yeah. With the with the hunting rifle, I feel like that's even more like weird because its existence kind of hurts a, a power up that we're going to be talking about later in terms of its potential future. But with like yep. the hunting rifle, it's just the fact that it's one in the chamber and the fastest reload in the game. Where you basically are forced to spend yeah, it because you also don't point have seven. any. Yeah, you don't have any recoil. Like you basically, well, you do technically have some, but it's pretty much non-existent. Where you're just allowed to just completely ping your target whenever versus the sniper, where you at least have to wait a little before firing again. Or you know, you could just spin the wheel, eh? It just, it just fire it. Oh, hey, I got that kill. I deserve it. Yeah. Also, people like. I think when it first came out, um, it, it originally had like 20 seconds, which uh, people thought it was like a little too slow. So the devs were like, okay, let's just nerf it by like a point, point 0.1 second and also oh, increase like fine. the bullet speed of it. Oh, uh, good. All right. Yep. So th that was our discussion on snipers. I actually lost the pay. Oh, wait, I'm back. <laughs> um, do we want to go right or down? Because we either have assault rifles on the right side or sparrow weapons below. Uh, let's go right. Let's go right. Yeah. All right, assault rifles. Um, I already said my piece. I'm not going to be a broken record. Um, I would always like to see the hold down right trigger for forever guns be a little bit weaker than the skill expression guns, and that's all I'm going to say. Go ahead. That's fair. But for me... Like, I can't say balance, but I also can't say, like, the other two extremes. It's a very odd gun for me, because I have seen so many opinions about it, and they're all in yep. either of the extremes. Like, there's also just none straight down the middle, because I don't really see anybody ever calling it balance. And it does also add to its, like, uh, history that I think it is the most nerfed gun in the entire game. Yeah, like what was it? it seven is. individual nerfs to the AK alone. Not even the M16. It's merely but, like weapon recoil changes, movement speed. Yeah, while shooting. I, I still technically qualify them as nerfs, but even then, even it's the just, recoil patterns. Oh my god, man! I, yeah, if I'm being honest, I genuinely history. don't have a thought. Yeah, I genuinely don't have an opinion. Like, if I'm being honest, I can't place it anywhere. Yeah. I think I think AK as of now, it's like I think it's fine where it is. Like twenty five bullets is all you need, really. <laughs> Which um, it may uh, be a big deal to some people, where oh that like magazine should have like thirty, but uh, I think twenty five is okay. It it just insinuates players to hit their shots a little more, <laughs> more than That's just true. relying on spraying and praying. And that's the same with the M sixteen. Yeah, also, okay. Also, funny enough, the the blue AK back in the day used to do a little more damage than the purple M16. It was only by one though. Oh yeah, that's right. I think a lot of people still think that about them. If I'm being honest, 
Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you have a blue or purple on 16, it's it's uh the same in terms of damage, but um, oh, I was actually just about just, to complain about that. It's just range differences. But yeah, with the range difference and the firing rate, I actually decided not to speak up about that because I think that's a good enough trade-off. Same damage, but faster firing rate and longer distance. That makes sense for yeah. a purple and gold weapon only, you know, no floor loot. Um, yep. So now we will go left, bottom left, and go to sparrow weapons. So bow and sparrow launcher. Let me open both these up so I can start comparing and contrasting. But um, other than that, I do hear about a lot of bow complainers. They just think that oh the movement yep. is too much. <laughs> I've, I've seen them. Yeah, bow, bow complainers complaining about... Um, bow jamming. Or just dying to it. Insane <laughs> movement mm -hmm. or the tracking being too long and feeling too oppressive. I've heard that argument as well. Uh, what do we think? Uh, I think with like bow, I've always just felt it was like really balanced. It's the same as like magnum for me. I just feel like it's a side grade to magnum in that way. Because like one prioritizes armor and like direct damage, whereas the other is just like, oh yeah, tracking and punch through. And because they've always probably been the most, I guess, in terms of seen skill expression wise throughout the game's history. Because you've always had people like um, Icy Crevasse, Light, Isabel just excel with the Magnum to such a high degree. And then you've always had uh, good bow users. Like, uh, specifically Nub Mikey, he was just horrifying with that thing if he was like with Sayo and Sayo just like was pocketing him. It's genuinely scary to go up against a good bow user, but when you put it in the hands of someone who doesn't know what they're doing or how to bow jump or how to use it even properly at all, it feels like it sucks. <laughs> so it can honestly be both like angles at once. So that's why I just put it in like flat balance because <sighs> it always just feels good. Dude, it's just tough because the people who suck with the bow don't pick it up because they suck with the bow. <laughs> But They're that, afraid. That is what that, makes the yeah. bow players so oppressive is because if I see someone rolling with a bow, I'm like, oh, okay, sweet. Here we go. <laughs> and literally yeah. just here we go. Yeah, yeah no. Literally here Run. we go. Like, <laughs> holy moly. So. And then you have the sparrow launcher, all right? So I'm going a, I'm to a hit you with that big slider over here. I've always found the sparrow launcher to be a bit overpowered. And I feel like that's like a really odd thing because nobody uses it. Nobody knows how to play around it, and when they get hit by it, they're, they look at their head and they'll be like, it's been 10 seconds, why the hell do I still have a bird on my head? Jeez. It's just, like, it's just a different version of Magnum. It tracks for 5 seconds longer than Blue Bow. I did not realize it's, that. Yeah, 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 it's a lot. A lot of people don't look at it. Holy moly, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I genuinely now, would say it's a bird. bullet speed and range? Is there any difference between that and the two? I think uh, it's a very slight one, but um, I don't know if they've changed is the it. the same. Oh, wait, sorry. A range is the same. Bullet the range speed, is the, same, but... the um, spare launcher is faster. Yep. Yes. Okay. Interesting. It's just with the bow, you don't have to reload and the spare so, launcher. Wait, so that wouldn't be a side grade, would it? Is that a no. direct upgrade? If it's, it's doing what it does longer... And better and distance and reload speed. Oh, well, obviously. Here's the thing: because with the bow, second. okay, with the bow, you don't have to reload at all, mm. and you could also no. do things like bow jumping. But with the sparrow launcher, you, you have do. higher tracking speed. Hmm. Okay, so I always, I, I always ones. found the bow to be pretty balanced, like as yeah. a whole. The bow. It wasn't yeah, it says it was... the bowman. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing: it was actually underpowered on release. Underpowered Let's see who this on killer really is. is. It, it, I mean, you know how much it did on damage? No, I kind of want to look at the changes. It did like 30. Uh, it, it doesn't say that in the patch notes, but it, hmm. it did around like 30-ish damage. It was it was. Oh, yeah, so no, it, it does say point, patch 0.96.3. Significant damage buff to the bow and sparrow and the sparrow launcher. Yep. Yeah. Wait, pressing the reload button while holding a charge bow will cancel the charge? Is that... Is that in yeah, game? It, yes, yep. that's true. You can do that. No that shot. Game. You can go do it right now. Wait, yep. that's interesting. I would always just switch weapons. 
but still, that's yeah. Kind of, I mean, I always switch weapons as well because like, for whatever reason you wanted to cancel a charge for like speed instead of just scrolling on your scroll wheel or something. Yeah, no, you can. And what is it? Just says the price of the cardinal bow increased. <laughs> Oh, that's because uh, they reworked the Cardinal Bow skin to actually have extra effects. And so, have, yeah, like, the actual Cardinal. Yeah, so cardinal they gave people to buy it. it before they increased the price because okay. it went from like a really like pointless skin to oh yeah, now it actually has stuff. Hmm. Okay, um, let's hit up the dart gun and the dart fly, and let's just try to kind of round out the specialty weapons pretty Ooh. quickly here because we are forty yeah. minutes into the recording, and I would still love to briefly touch some of the super overpowered or underpowered things it in the power ups and the uh, throwables as well. So, um, yeah. dark gun, dart fly. What do we think? Dark gun. I, I, I think it needs. Dark fly I need a nerf. Yeah. <laughs> so it does need a nerf. I think the dart gun needs a rework. I think it should be Fair. the more darts you do, the more damage it can ramp up, up or down, instead of just one tick flat damage every single time. Uh, kind of has, as it was proposed by Phantom, making it a little bit more valuable if you're actually landing consecutive shots instead of just plinking one thing just to be annoying and running away, you know? Um, I think it would be a good gameplay change mm. to have a ramping effect like that for both healing and damage. Um, the dart... Dark fly. Fly, I probably think it needs a nerf too. That's it's oh, kinda, 100%. It's kind of I think close. I think what um I would suggest for like both those weapons is that if if I, I've seen this in like feedback and then I I thought this was really good, but I think the player getting shot um should have like a little skull indicator to tell how many shots they've been taking. Because it's a little hard to see the darts, but but here's the thing, the 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 dart fly user will not be able to see it. It's only the person that's that's hit. Yeah, I think it's a really good uh, uh, quality life change for dart guns because it's a little hard to see uh, the dart the darts you know, hmm. and uh, see how many times you've been shot. So I, I think that's a great change. I would probably suggest to it. I want to suggest one change. I think it would make the weapon more. Uh, just more interesting overall is instead of the first tick being 0.5 seconds after it hits an opponent, what if it was like one second or like 1.2 seconds so that there actually is a little moment where you actually have to decide, do I need to start drinking right now to kind of yeah. offset it, which obviously is a disadvantage to yourself, which is still good for the person on the other side of that dart, you know, um, instead of it just being like, I'm hit and I'm already taking damage. I'm either already dead and there was no counterplay other than dodging the very slow dart. Or I just think that would make for more dyna dynamic gameplay is having an extra little bit of time after being hit for damage to start ticking so that there can be more counterplay or extra things that happen. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. That could be interesting. Do you think like the initial damage, like the, the, the impact hit should be a little bit nerfed or does, do you think it should be like, do you think it should stay? I don't know. Initial damage oh, yes, 10, poison damage 9 every 0.6 seconds for 4 ticks. Um, that's, nah, that's, that's probably fine. Yeah. Okay. Actually, what is 9 times 4 plus 10? What is that damage over a green dart gun doing for one dart hit? 46. Wait, the, yeah. that can't be right. It does 46 damage for a green one dart hitting you? Yes. No, it does not. Am I crazy? Yep. What? 46 damage. It's 49 for the gold dart fly. Huh. Yep. That's a lot of damage. Oh, it looks like the initial That's damage has damage. already been low lowered for the common and the rare version already in 1.6. Oh, so, yeah, it used to two shot before. Yeah, the initial damage yep. also was already nerfed. Interesting. From 13 to 11 and 11 to 10. There was so, a lot of people complaining about um, being yeah. two shot. Other than that, with the invisible bounces, kind of how Weezy was talking about, and some other interesting things to make it more dynamic, I think dart, normal dart fly is pretty good in my eyes, but dart fly should have some, uh, some nerfs, changes. Probably. Um, yeah, I think the guns itself, it just needs a quality life change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else to say? 
about this before we yeah. move on to our last one, the heavy weapons guy. Let's just move on to the funny weapons. The funny weapons. Heavy weapons, the big collecting gun, and the minigun. Um, I've always oh thought boy. BCG was overpowered to this day, even after all the changes. I was the BCG crier originally because I would have Harna, who was number one BCG kills in the world, running gold BCG against me every Yeah, they would just bully game. you nonstop. Yes, yes. And they would shoot it over hay bales and they would shoot it, bounce it off three walls and into my face. So, like, I was the big crybaby about it at the beginning. But honestly, after the. It is a high risk changes, high reward in the end, though. After the recent changes, I haven't complained about it at all. Let's see, gold BCG down from 76 direct impact to 72, right? Yep. It means yep. that you couldn't two shot reliably, but you still yeah. can. And oh, interesting. 1.7, the damage radius was increased and the movement speed was increased. That's interesting. So it had it already has gotten one round of buffs before in patch 1.7. Yeah, because a lot of people used to complain. But I remember, and to quote from Neon Assassin, when the update first came out and that thing dropped, everyone thought it was trash, but he straight up said to me, this is the most overpowered gun in the game, everyone's just bad. And he proceeded to take like second on the leaderboard in one day. <laughs> it was horrifying to see good BCG players at the very start when everyone thought it was bad, because there was like no counterplay yet. Nope, and there wasn't. Yeah, we all thought it was a bad gun, and then they changed it, and we're all like, oh god, it's a good gun. Hmm. So, BCG minigun, come on, I want to hear your opinions. Uh, uh, popcorn said OP. Minigun underpowered, haha. <sighs> I feel like it is, actually. Honestly, I honestly don't think minigun really needs like any changes. I think it's fine where it is. Mm. Like, overall. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it, maybe it could just use like a slight, uh, I don't know. I think they should just revert point, nerf. Point 0.96 and bring back epic rarity minigun. I'm not even joking. Let's yeah, go, yeah. great minigun. <laughs> not even capping. There, there, used, there actually used to be a epic rarity minigun when no, I played. I'm not even joking. I actually think that would save the minigun. <laughs> It would having make it a, usable in squads. Having, having a purple one. And I think, one. and funny enough, it was... Actually, no. There's purple M16 in mole crates, but yeah. Uh, purple weapons would be in mole crates back then. Yeah, um, balancing was weird. Yeah, my main note on the minigun the is... Caches. I think any gold weapon out of a crate I need to be terrified of, but every time I see a gold minigun, I kind of just, like, laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of just I smirk. just shrug it off. And literally, I had a... Um, video that came out legitimately today shameless plug uh <laughs> where i was playing with the single pistol for a video with yeah the you're gonna pistol. shoot yourself if you lost and i was gonna soak myself if i lost right in the final game a guy was holding down a gold minigun down my corridor and i walked around the <laughs> hallway into his minigun and out damaged him with my single pistol <laughs> my <Yep. laughs> my blue single pistol so like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not hard I, to outplay a minigunner. I just feel like I should not be able to laugh. Oh, sorry. It was a purple single pistol. for. I just went and looked it up. Just so oh, damn. I can't alive. believe it. But I walked into a minigun then, on purpose into a purple single pistol and out damaged the golden minigun out of the crate that the guy worked so hard for with my ground loot single pistol. So that's what I'm saying is I always want to, um, to be... To feel fear if someone has taken the time to secure the uh, yeah lo the lootations. So it's I think the fear the fear of it's just uh, someone pre-firing you. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's true. Yeah. So that's the only reason I want to see a buff is because I want to feel I want to feel fear in my heart when I see the. Mm -hmm. Why do I I legitimately fear more a super right laser being held down in a close corridor than I do? It's a because it's annoying and easy to get. Yeah, it's easier to get. What's the? It's more lightweight too. So yeah. Um. How many bullets are in the, the minigun? By the way, a hundred. A hundred. Just found it. Gotcha. All right. Um. Any other notes about minigun or BCG? 
Yep, let's move on to uh, throwables. No, hold on, Weezy. Oh. Do you have anything? I don't want to rule no, over you. No, no, no. Okay, no oh, no, yeah, no. you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I sometimes I feel like out of the both of us, we can loudly yap popcorn, and sometimes I feel like we can kind of steamroll Weezy sometimes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I, I, we'll just take a nah, moment. you're good. You're good. Yeah, we'll take a moment to check on the Weezer. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, so, would you rather hit up throwables or equipments right now or sorry they're not called equipments they're called are we gonna skip melee <laughs> oh my gosh i even talk about that because it's a weapon <laughs> yeah um it's it's 33 it's damage tree. 33 damage interesting bypassing armor for 16.5 damage okay uh sure anyone have little notes on melee mine's pretty simple. i used to uh, not respect melee until i met javaro and then I'm, and now i fear people who just run at me swinging <laughs> I used to like not prioritize melee as much back then, <laughs> unless it was like unless I was doing it for the memes. But overall, like, uh, I'm so glad they reworked uh, uh, the me melee too. animation. Holy moly! It was it was atrocious. It is literally <laughs> one of the most widely loved updates I've ever heard. And doing alphabet duos has really taught me that because like eight <laughs> out of twenty five creators so far have said the the melee changes. Like, it really yeah. just made something that was a meme <laughs> turn into something actually valuable gameplay-wise. So, yeah, good job on Melee. Yeah. It's pretty much good where it's at, right? I wouldn't want it to do any it's more damage. It's perfectly fine. I think, I think it's fine. Balance. It's fine now. Um, yeah, it doing 33 damage on Flesh is pretty solid. I wouldn't want it to 3 hit. If it did, like, 35 damage a piece, that would feel pretty bad. So, yeah. um, all right. Short note on Melee. Let's go ahead and hit up the super power ups now. Yippee! Um, la I almost said lots. There's not too many power ups. There's eight. Um, and I feel like I probably only have four of them that I would even. There want was to five on release. <laughs> there was only five on release. That's interesting. Yeah, it was cup grade forker, the skunk vial, which is now the snorkel, uh, the claw boots, and the ninja boots. That's it. Yep. Interesting. So, those are the five on release. Uh, we'll start at the top of the wiki here for those following along with us, which is the claw boots. Do, does anyone have notes on it? Overpowered, underpowered, down the middle. Perfectly balanced right where it is. It's, it's balanced. Okay, perfect. I agree with you guys. Awesome. Banana Forker. I, it's hard to like talk about Banana Forker without just yeah. saying, oh yeah, big number. <laughs> but... It's only overpowered if you put it in the hands of a good player, and I feel like that's its issue, that when you talk about like bow in that sense, where it can be really strong if you put it in a good player, there's a limit to how strong it can be, whereas with the Forker, there's so much expression with it that it's really the only power-up that I would describe as volatile and dangerous, if it's not like treated or respected well because yeah being able to fully heal in literally like five seconds all while being able to move as much as you want is pretty scary so i still would put it in like overpowered not the highest part of overpowered but like it's like bottom tier overpowered yeah it, it's just there you save so just much enough. time at, yeah. as a healer <laughs> like you didn't even need to use your you didn't even need to use your health your, your health cup honestly um, well, you have the four group. I would have said it was a little bit over P or it was a little bit OP during the 25 HP per banana, but uh, I think it's sitting at 20 and also it's natural state. Yeah, now it takes like five bananas. Coconuts yeah. and mushrooms. I think it's honestly in a pretty solid spot now. Uh, I will always think it be a little sad the more skill expression things get nerfed. And I think Banana Forker is that, like you were talking about the really good Banana Forker players. They like, did make think, it easier to use yeah. with um, increased spawn rates for bananas to offset mm. that nerf, yeah. but I don't entirely know. And I do think it was a little warranted because it was such like an, a, it was an exclusive club, to put it simply, that a lot of people didn't look at it, and especially a lot of new players. Yeah. And I mean this, it's the worst power up in the game. And it mainly stems from the fact that they don't read what it does. And even when they do, they're like, oh, yeah, it can't be that overpowered. And then when they see someone actually do it, they're like, what the that fuck? I just had three HP bars against me. <laughs> Literally, you guys, like, you okay. can just fully heal. 
A little side note with the Forker, what people don't notice is that there is um, an increased range with it when you interact with consumables, and it doubles the amount of health when you eat, like, forged items on the ground. Yeah. So, so even if you're not just using bananas, it still has its benefit. If you make it's your it's home, very situational, though. If you make your home around the health juice factory, you're probably... <laughs> yeah, or the beach. I mean, there's technically good. a different power up for that. Oh, well. All right. Um, Ninja Booty's next. Um, reduces f- noise from moving by 50%. Increased movement speed by 5%. Prevents footstep trails from appearing in Walking Dead. I did not know it does that, but then again, I don't play the Walking Dead. So. Yeah. It does it. It's like at the very tippity top of like balance. I like to use I it when I play that. when I play solos. Uh, yeah, I like to be very quiet. So um, I use it. There was one moment where I realized I might not like it being at five percent. It was when I was doing this challenge on stream where all I had to do was run away from people and not get meleeed, and I would have to dish out money. And Rookie had ninja booties on, ate one blue mushroom, and caught me in a full movement speed handball. Broke the handball with his melee cancels, and then meleeed me to death. And I said, It's genuinely I insane. Said, Wait a second. With a 5% move speed increase from ninja booties, one blue mushroom, he was able to catch me on a full speed handball, break my ball, and kill me. And that's where I said, Is 5% too much? That is what I said in my head. What do you think? Is 5% the sweet spot? Or like, is 3% still valuable, but not like in, insane? Because I feel like it, it is quite insane. I would right have now. to like, I would have to like test the difference between that. But yeah, honestly, that would be something that I would have to feel rather than just talk about. Yeah. But, but still, a, that a was a moment where I was like, wait a second, have our ninja booties way more insane than I ever thought. How could someone possibly catch up to me in a full speed handball? Just like naturally so yeah uh, so i don't know um tip top of balance though for pop what do you think wheezy uh i'd say like top top of balance that's way. it's like, really close to overpowered but not there mm, yeah it's okay. it's like so it's like, like for example if it. they come back and they say all right guys uh the boots were a little bit weak not picked as much uh we <laughs> upped the moving speed to seven percent are you like uh, it's over i just you if it was seven percent, I would backtrack on that. Yeah, no, I, I just, uh, no, hell See, no. This or is, even this ten, or even ten percent. This is where it gets crazy. If it's six percent, is it overpowered? I'm trying to find your sweet spot, popcorn, because you just I, okay. said. I I have a really weird take about the ninja boots, and I think that it it's good that it's as strong as it is because of a thing I learned when I was like helping balance other games, and that. One of the lead uh, developers for, I think it was like this very niche like space card game I worked on, I forgot the name, but he straight up said to me, it's a good thing to have some very strong things as long as they aren't insanely abusable, because you can always have a good balance with strong things. They just need to be used in strong cases. With the ninja boots, a lot of newer players especially look at the reduction in noise more than the five percent movement speed increase and a lot of like longer term players look at that movement speed increase and go real shit i'm gonna use that and then they basically just i don't want to say abuse it but it is the easiest to understand strongest thing that you can equip without putting too much effort and that's the reason why i think it's like at the very top of balance because it's just close enough to saying, like, if it was six for me, I think it would be pushing the edge. If it was four, I'd say it wouldn't be worth it. But at five, it's kind of in this weird spot where it's really nice as a power-up, really easy to use, but just not quite there. Now, I'm blocking dead. Yeah, I'd flat out put it in overpowered. I think that the foot trail prevention just needs to be removed outright. And I have a whole mm. video I'm going to make on blocking dead, but... I yeah no like for as what it is it's balanced but strong. Right. Yeah. Um, next is the skunk gas snorkel, formerly known as the skunk gas vial. It's that that uh, that power up has gotten so many reworks and it's, it's oh, insane. Dude, it used to do something entirely different. Now from what it is, it used to just poison your man. It had like it had like a couple stages. So yeah, uh, it used to. <laughs> 
It used to flat out remove darts at one point, and then it reduced their damage, and they're like, nah, screw that. Let's just make it... Let's just make you immune to dark gun. Yeah, let, let's just remove a feature from the game. But um, where it is now, to this day, I will always say this. I think it is genuinely the most well-balanced thing in the game, besides something like Magnum. For ability-wise, I think it is flat in the middle, and for one good reason, it's inoffensive. Like... There's good use case for literally any player. For, like, newer players, they'll use it to get away from Storm. For, like, a lot of the mid-range players, they'll use it to sort of, like, deal with the final ring or deal with, like, Skunk Bomb Spam because you can run through it, avoiding the second tick of Skunk Bomb damage if you run straight through the middle, which is what a lot of players don't know, that instead of, like, taking two ticks of, like, what was it, 16? You'll just take one tick of 15 by just running straight through the middle because it's yeah. that fast. But, and then for the longer term players, I've seen a ton of people explore its options as a flanking tool in last circle, and I've seen some insane plays, and that's why I think it's genuinely so balanced, because it's not, it doesn't excel extremely good at, like, one thing, but rather multiple things that it could excel at, given your knowledge of the ability. So if you know it really well and know what you can get away with, it's amazing, but if you don't, it's just okay. And that's why I think it's like flat balance. Hmm. I agree. I just think it's I think yeah. it's pretty balanced. It's a very good survival survival power up. Yeah. If that is if you're gonna be playing on like the outer edge of the ring. Actually, let me let me kind of tie this into our next one. Then the next one on the list is cup grade. And I wanna know, as you can <laughs> see, the cup grade just straight up says twenty five percent faster healing, right? Um, that's a lie. Wait, wait, what do you mean that's a lie? That is a lie. And a lot of people don't know this because they don't account for the two-second pullout time. So it's actually the total time to heal. A lot of people think it's like 10.5 for normal cup and 8.4 for cup grade. That's the actual healing you get. The time it takes from pressing like Q or whatever your button is when you're at one health to go to 100 is 12.5 and 10.4 for cup grade. And that's because of the two-second pullout time. What it's actually yep. benefiting is the actual healing, not the time it takes entirely to do the process. So it's actually 20.2 as a buff for your overall healing. Yeah, that being said, it sucks. Put it in a... <laughs> I think it just needs a rework. <laughs> I, I made the statement of feedback a couple days ago that I just think that if you reduce the pull-up time by like 25%, it would be fine. That's um, all. Okay, sorry. My, yeah, my, my, my mic arm fell off my desk. <laughs> so Bro. I literally put it, attached it back to my desk. So that's what I was going to mention is you look at something like the, the snorkel and you see not only 25% increased movement speed, but also 10% from the skunk acid and skunk bombs and also prevents coughing. So would you want to see anything else added in popcorn? You kind of added it like an extra 25% pulling out speed to kind of just bring it closer to some of the other um add-ons who all have multiple different types of um buffs and additions you know what i'm saying it feels weird that cup grade is so simple when there isn't like a single simple other power-up everything has multiple uses multiple different unique situations and cup grade just feels so raw compared to everything else if that makes sense there was a q a that the devs had a while ago where they did talk about cup grade and why it's simple and that's specifically for new players it was a power-up designed for pretty much new players. Because you pick it up, you see faster healing rate, and you'd be like, oh, yippee, that'll help me like heal up my damage faster. It's insanely easy to understand what it does, even if you just look at it and don't read it or notice what it's doing. You'll yeah. probably think to yourself, yeah, it's going to heal me faster. There is like and a sound indicator. Up. There is a sound indicator indicating it. It is a cup grader. And oh, the, yeah, that's true. There is different noises, as well as the impossible tape, but we'll get to that. Yeah, and that's actually next. Um, impossible tape, which I actually had so low on my personal tier list of uh, powers until, like, one day. I just, like, used it for, like, a week straight, and now it's, like, one of my, like, top two. Literally. Like, no, that, that was me. <laughs> yeah, I actually love the impossible tape now. I have no idea why. Um... And I rarely it use was the armor. Originally, 
it was originally really powerful back then. Yeah, I, I yeah. rarely oh, use the armor swap. Just sometimes being able to have that 15% uh, faster taping is literally just extremely valuable. Like in a game where you're getting pinged with so much damage, it feels so good. Um, what do you it's think? it's one of the most like aggressive power ups that is, that is if you have an aggressive play style. So yeah, and I'm I, glad I they actually they, changed uh, it. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> has like before. the funniest balance history in the entire game because on release, I remember a lot of people looked at the um, the bandolier, which we're going to talk about. Uh, I think literally next, actually, is it? Yeah, no, it's next. But a lot of people looked at the bandolier as the better one on release. Like, I literally saw a ton of people saying, oh, yeah, look at the bandolier, ignore that impossible tape thing. What people then realized, oh, is, oh, yeah, we should really be looking at that impossible tape thing because, oh, my God, it is quite literally the strongest thing I think Super Animal Royale as a game has ever seen. Like, not even just ability-wise, concept-wise. Because yep. you literally were able to just jump from player to player without having to heal whatsoever so if you were really like hyper aggressive play style wise don't even care about the banana forker for its burst healing just pick up the impossible tape free tier twos and mostly repaired tier threes for galore and then after the devs realized it was too powerful they took it to an alleyway shot it 48 times in the leg and wherever else really and then it just rocketed straight to d tier it sucked and then they said, you know what, maybe we neutered it a bit too much. They gave the 15% taping speed increase, and now it's pretty good. Yeah. That's so, basically what happened. I wouldn't call it balance, if I'm being honest. I would say it's like, okay, I'd put it in overpowered, but at the literal very bottom of it. Like, it's so close to being balanced, I just think a lot of people sleep on it. I mean, if the if the opponent has a tier one armor, it, it it'll repair that tier one immediately. Yeah. So. Yeah, you gotta you gotta hope to that honest, the player has a tier one. I can't call the impossible tape overpowered and not call the boots overpowered though. So I'm gonna keep them just at the tip top. Of That's balance fair. For me then. Um, yep. Any other notes before we hit up the bandolier and then the the Voldemort of power ups? Uh no, I personally I think I'm oh. good, Weezy. Oh. I think I'm I'm fine. All right, yeah. Bandolier, another really weird little power up that personally mm -hmm. I never use, but the more and more I watch people use it, the more I want to try it and try some silly goofy things out. So, what do you guys think? With the Bandolier, I just okay. First, I just straight up put it in like underpowered. Uh, the thing is, though, it pisses me off that people compare it to um, a power up that we're going to be talking about next because there is a massive difference in power level there when you it compare really it to yeah because I mean, the bandolier have, it's at least factors. usable yeah the bandolier is at least like it has a use case it's also really good in blocking but even if you are just like picking it up one time in like solo in solos you get that extra throwable you get that extra tape it's not terrible it's just weak That's that's really all I got to say. Easy. Uh, yeah, I think I'm leaning towards like underpowered on this one as well. But like, I feel like any change to it, it would be a little too strong. That's uh, oh, that's yeah, exactly no. what I was gonna say. I truly don't know what I would change to make it not instantly jump to overpowered. Yeah, like, I I, feel I did like Hammer's like suggestion actually, which was, uh. He suggested giving it an extra throwable slot, but you'd cut that slot in half, and you had to have a different power oh, uh, throwable. Okay, yeah, that's that's actually genius. It's actually really cool. I just like so like, like, would, uh, like, like imagine three you have different combinations of like um, like throwables, right? Like you could pair skunks with grenades to be able to like force someone into a corner, or you or can basically cat mine. Okay. Yeah. If you want a more defensive playstyle, oh Jesus, <laughs> slip and good uh, yeah. friend. <laughs> hey bud, no, let me stun lock you real quick. Yeah, no, I think me. it would have a very good skill application too for yeah, what it is. It would, it would. And then there's the um, there's the other change which I do like to call the uh, the boogeyman of the bandolier balance, which is a buffed reload speed. 
A lot of people oh. point to that, and whenever they do, you look at the feedback section, and you'll see, I think, 17 people saying, you can't do that because the hunting rifle exists. Oh, yeah. I will a thousand percent agree with that. The literal second, if this thing ever gets a buff to its reload speed, we're doomed. Yeah. It's, it's an underpowered, like, power-up that, like, it shouldn't be, like, too oppressive, I would say. Like, any form of change would be, uh, would make it way too powerful. That's why I like cameras. It's very simplistic, but still, like, flexible. But yeah, having, having a, an extra th throwable saw would be really nice. But just Cut like, in half. I need to but have reduce size. the yeah, yeah reduce the throwable capacity. That would be really good though. I, I think uh, it's time. Yep, it is time uh, to uh, talk about the last the one. No, you said its name. Oh, the dead. super juicer, and it's <laughs> anything <laughs> but super. <laughs> Is anything but super, and um, has it's called been... juicer now. <laughs> yeah, it's the, just the juicer, and there was already one change made to this thing, right? Or am I crazy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, it was only one change. But wait, why don't I see it in the patch history? <laughs> it's uh, it, it probably hasn't been updated. Yeah, it just hasn't been updated. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, um, get on that wiki heads. No, um, what was I'll that go change? To the I don't even remember. Right oh, it was from 250 to 300, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 250 to 300. Yeah, these patches. Yeah it, says, yeah, it says 200, but... It's uh, the reason why, in feedback, I made a little joke saying, uh, next balance change, you should make it go from 300 to 305. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so many people have <laughs> voted. So, uh, this is interesting because i feel like the only time i have seen people um use the juicer are during videos <laughs> during videos where they're trying to make something terrible work or if mm -hmm. they accidentally pressed e or their equip button and didn't realize until the end of the game that wait what did i have i had a juicer um so, so yep. it's in a really sad state what would you guys want to see change to make it valuable i uh, think there's a lot that you could do to it. There's been so many concepts yeah. in feedback. Um, there was the whole, like, separate mushroom juice one, where if you juice up, like, certain consumables, you'd have, like, special juice that you could drink that would give you, like, on-demand effects. Like, um, you eat up a speech room. You can basically just gain four seconds of movement speed when you drink that specific one. Or if you, like, eat up a coconut, you basically take... Um, you, you instantly tape up one armor, I think it was. And okay. I've always, like, loved that concept, but I think it was just a bit and too, And then like, health yeah. like, health fruit would just give you more HP, right? Like, no, yeah. It would, it would, I think, actually give you a slight overheal, but it would diminish very fast. That's what they said. Uh. But my, yeah. the, okay, that one's my favorite, but I think the funniest one, which I've even, like sort of like joined on that bandwagon when it was still a concept was to just merge it with the cup grade or just remove now, cup grade but like yeah give the super juicer the 25 percent like Ooh. heal yeah but, but this also, is what i was thinking about but, though but do you think yeah. they should nerf the carried amount to make it a little more balanced or not really if they do merge it with the cup grade it shouldn't be 300 that might be a bit too excessive for drink offs yeah I think but, I think 250 is fine. Yeah, but with to, the to go against deal. um, or sorry, to go forward on what Broad said back when we were talking about cup grade, you like you were really like poking at the simplicity of it. I always thought that because it was so simplistic, you can make it so that like Dooley's, if you find like a second cup grade, you could just merge it to then create the juicer, which would basically be like old juicer and cup combined. Yeah, so like you'd have to go out of your way to create this sort of super power up. Yeah, but would you want other like power ups to also combine as well? Is that just cup grade and juicer? I think because... you could just do cup grade and juicer because let's be honest, they could have done it with something like Magnum, but they just chose pistols. And yeah, but those are weapons; those aren't power ups. Like I, I get it, but at the same time, it's just like 
it would be the easiest way to go about like fixing it by just making it its like enhanced form. And I do think that you could make like uh, I think a Lemoyne made a video concept about merge power ups as like a game mode or even just flat addition to the game where you could like mix and match power ups to gain like diminished effects of either or even with like negatives. But you'd have kind of like their both of their effects in some way. And I've always found that interesting to just be like its own sort of um, spin on power ups. But as it stands for the juicer, the one large statement is that it needs a change. It doesn't need a buff, it just needs a change. <laughs> yep. Go ahead and swap up the concept here, gamers. Um, yeah. So we are hour and 15 minutes in the recording. I would still like to hit up one more Robles. thing. Yes. Before we go, and that would be our throwables. And I just clicked the tab so I can see them now. And in order, we have Grenade, Banana, Skunk, Bomb, Cat, Mine, and Zip and Go. We don't have to stop at each one. Uh, I just want to hear a shout out of uh, overpowered, underpowered, which ones you think. And if so, how you would change it to get it to your desired destination, which would hopefully be balanced. I think that all the throwables are honestly in a pretty good place besides something like the zip line. And as a personal note, the cat mine, uh, I, cause like with grenade, I feel like there's good application to it. Knowing where you can and can't throw over is a very nice, like skill curve to it. And even then it's always so satisfying. Even if you don't kill a person to just chunk them for a bit of damage and maybe their armor, uh, with bananas, I think that they are, they're also just a really nice skill play power up because learning how to stun lock people, learning how to like, for any throwable, being able to throw them in front of you to then force someone to either give up chase or sort of lag behind you a bit more is a nice skill to have. And with bananas, they have to respect that one really, really well because if they don't, they're going to get stun locked. And that's probably the worst way to go, if I'm being honest. Skunks, yeah. they're good area denial. They're not, like, insanely strong. And I'd lean them a bit toward weak, but at the same time, they're still quite balanced. You know, like, they're good in, like, duos as well. Uh, but besides that, I've always found cat mines to be a bit underwhelming. And I can't say any more because there is that infamous clip of me dying to three of them after telling my friend to shut up. Uh, <laughs> and then there's also... Uh, you know what, I'm just going to stop talking. Point is, yeah, that and the zip line. The zip line definitely needs some love. That's really all I have to say. But I feel like it's actually the same situation as the juicer by now, where it just needs a complete rework. It doesn't need a buff or a nerf. It needs to be reworked if it's going to find value. Um, yep. And I actually have no comments on the rest of them because I feel like they're pretty good at what they do and they're pretty good spots. The one thing I'd like to mention is this is something that I call a bug. I don't know if it's actually a bug. When you trigger a cat mine, when the, it is on the conveyor belt of the health juice factory, it completely stops, and I feel like it should continue moving because I don't know why something exploding would make oh, it all of a sudden yeah. sit completely still. I feel like it, it disjoints itself. I, I feel like it, it, yeah, it disjoints itself. Yeah, it disjoints itself. Continue to does. interact with the conveyor belt, meaning moving cat mine explosions, not just moving cat mines when it's on the conveyor belt. Um, other than that which I feel like would be a slight buff, but very, 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 very situational, obviously. Cat mines in the health series factory specifically. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, other than zips, I'm all good. What do you got, Wheezy? So I think with the grenades, um, I think they're like in between balanced and overpowered, at least for me, because grenades in certain areas that are all green, they're a little hard to see. So I, I want to see some something like similar to like the skunk bomb. Like, you know where it has like a little... Uh, circle radius of visual indicator. I, I want to see that with the grenade, Ooh. so that there's more there's more clarity because it's a little hard to see grenades. In Just like the moment spots. it yeah. touches the ground, or like ha that would be yeah. visual. Color yeah, if it was in the air, right? So you just mean as yeah, when it touches the ground. Okay. When it touches yeah. the ground, I think it's I think it's completely. I think that's what the rework should be because grenades are so they're so reliable like all the time, but. A, a visual indicator would be nice for that. Uh, bananas, I think they're fine as it is. Um, 
like you can use them offensively or defensively to, to your play style. Skunk bombs, I've always found it to be very balanced because it's it's not too oppressive. Um, like well, unless you're in a building, but and final circle, and that's about it. You don't you really want to use them willy nilly. Um, cat mines, I find a little underwhelming, but. I mean, as a cat mine, it's a proximity mine, so mm. you, you want to set it as a, up as a trap. Yeah. And then zip and goes, I find it a little underwhelming as well, but it, it does require some more love in general. So mm, I agree. Just a, a complete rework with that one. If I can add something quickly about the concepts of thorables in general, mm -hmm. they are extremely buggy, but on an internal sense. And with, like, an emu, mainly... But you can also just, quite literally, back, I think, in 2020, like, December, I used to be really into bug hunting, especially, like, with emus, but just in general. And I found that, and I don't think they've ever fixed this, you can use a grenade to clip through a wall with yourself. It was yeah. like this, I don't know if you could actually, like, find an old clip of it, but if you threw it at just the right point, and then you, you ran over the building. wall... No, no, I know you could throw it over a building. I'm talking about, like, I'm saying oh, you yeah. as a player can move through the wall. Which uh. is a very interesting thing to watch happen, because I remember, like, you know, back December 2020, I forgot who it was that I was playing with. I think it was Old Lance, but I think what it was, yeah, you'd have to throw it against, like, a wall. It would have to land right next to the wall, and you would have to start running, and it would have to explode right as you hit the wall like you'd have i think honestly just one frame to do it and what would happen is your character would move through the wall take like 99 damage but you'd just be able to move through the wall and i've never obviously that would never be practical because dealing 99 damage to yourself to gain one movement momentum is honestly really stupid but when something like that's possible yucky but yeah no you can also just throw grenades over trees that's a normal thing you can throw them to the edge of the fence like or sorry not the edge especially of the fence, but, yeah. especially having do that dodgeball multiple dodgeball tournaments i've really gotten to see how buggy grenades can be how they oh, will yeah. go into the left edge of a table and teleport to the other side top right and instantly explode with no cue like, oh, I haven't even started talking about throwable teleporting, but I'm going to yeah. refrain because I can talk about that for hours. Yeah, so um, honestly, that is yeah. the guns, power-ups, and throwables. And join us next week where we talk for four hours about emus. We'll see you then. Yeah. <laughs> four hours on emus. No, I'm just kidding. I have a feeling that Welcome, Lily. <laughs> it could be cool to have a conversation next week about maybe mystery mode because mystery mode is dropping in a mere three days, correct? Yeah. Three days until Hammer's mystery birthday. mode uh, drops, and we might be able to have some interesting conversations on uh, that and some of the tweets that came out from Michael, the developer. Game modes in general, honestly. Yeah, game about. modes in general. Could be a cool conversation. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, I was Birds My Goats, and with me I had Popcorn the Beaver and Wheezy Jacket. Uh, feel free to <laughs> like and subscribe if, and we'll see you next week for another episode of the Sarcast. Sorry Bye. for my war crimes. That's a great ending tag. Sorry for my <laughs> war crimes. Sorry for you.